Well, good evening and welcome to the 1973 Miss New Zealand contest, the 14th. In 50 minutes, we'll know who is Miss New Zealand 1973. We've got a lot to do until then. So let's start out with a song from Maria Dallas. Without any warning, you can tell very well that it's all gonna happen. I love your kind of loving, what a feeling you bring. It's a very fine thing that we're doing today. Hey, 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 I love your kind of loving, let the wedding bells ring. It's a very fine thing that you're going my way, hey, that you're going my Sunday with the sweetest of honey and without you I can go on Cause now that I've met you how can I just forget you cause I need you beside me all the time that I got me I love your kind of loving What a feeling you bring It's a very fine thing that we're doing today Hey, hey, hey. I love your kind of loving Let the wedding bells ring It's a very fine thing Exuberant, Maria Dallas. Well, there are 12 Miss New Zealand finalists this year, and there are 12 judges here on stage who, uh, among other things, have to look at the overall effect. This girl is going to go away and represent us overseas in the commercial world. Uh, she's going to meet all sorts of interesting people and perhaps be very, very rich very soon. They look for poise, deportment, personality, the ability to communicate, and so, so that you and the judges can both see them and meet them. Let's meet them individually, shall we? The Miss New Zealand contestants for this year. First of all, Miss Southland. Miss Southland is Diane Main from Gore. Diane is 18 and works as a shop assistant. Hello, Diane. You're first out. Pretty That's scary? Right. No, I'm fine. Good. Listen, why did you enter the Miss New Zealand contest? Well, I was um, pressurised into it, but once I was in the Miss Southland, I really enjoyed it, and here I am now. Yes, indeed. Representing your province. That's right. You used to march, as it were, and now you teach marching. Yes. Did you get too old or something? No. Um, the senior team, they never got enough girls for it, so I gave up and um, started teaching the midgets. Midgets, yes. that's not necessarily their size? No. <laughs> How old do midgets go up to? Um, they range from about 8 to 11 years old. Hmm. Yes. Your Miss Southland, Diane Main. <laughs> Diane Main. Miss Otago. Family King. 
This year's Miss Otago is from Dunedin. Pamela is 20 and is a receptionist and model. How are you, Pam? I'm fine, thank you. That's the caper. You're lucky because you've been overseas before. You've been to America? Yes, I was in Alaska for two years, mainly Alaska. Mm -hmm. And you're a model. Tell me about the modeling. Um, well, I started modeling in Alaska in the United States, and I took a course there and modeled for about all the time I was over there. Since I've been back, I've been modeling full time too. Well, especially recently, since I got back from Australia, I've been modeling full time for a company in Christchurch. And your sporting interests, tell me about those. Sports. I love mm. to ski, snow ski mainly, um, horseback ride, skin diving. Most things, just about anything. I used to do athletics at high school. Incredibly okay. fit lady. Still am, too. <laughs> Indeed you are. That's Miss Otago, Pam King. <laughs> Pam King. Miss Canterbury. From Christchurch, 18-year-old Cheryl Taylor. Cheryl, a student teacher, represents Canterbury. Hello, Cheryl. Hello, Colin. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. A little bit nervous, but not too bad. Uh -huh. Now, you're teaching, or a student teacher. Yes, that's right. I'm a student teacher in Christchurch. This is my second year, which I had to take off in order to do the tour. Any particular reason why you chose teaching as a profession, Cheryl? Well, it's quite a few reasons, really. I love children. I think that's my foremost reason. Uh, it's also a good career for women. Um, I have fabulous holidays, and it's quite good pay. You're pretty happy all around, aren't you? Yes, I am. You've got a lovely smile, too. That's Miss Canterbury, Cheryl Taylor. Cheryl Taylor. <laughs> Miss Wellington. Miss Wellington, Susan Roche, is 18 and lives in the capital. Susan is training as an occupational therapist. Hello, Susan. Hello. Occupational therapy. To me, that means basket weaving and things like that. Is that right? I'm afraid you're very wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, occupational therapy is mainly a lot of ther theory, really. You learn things like psychology, physiology, anatomy, neurology and things like that. Psychology must be interesting because uh, you're dealing with people who are, um, you know, as you say. Yes. <laughs> no, no, I didn't mean that unkindly at all. <laughs> no, but I think that's really one thing that I've learned from this trip, and that's meeting so many people and you learn a, a tremendous amount, and that's really important, I think. And you love it? Yes, I do. You do. The best of luck. That's Miss Wellington. <laughs> Susan Roach. Miss Golden Shears. Jackie Thomas, 20-year-old travel consultant from Martinborough, is Miss Golden Shears. Ah, Jackie, travel is one of your interests. Yes, that's right. Any particular reason, any particular country you want to travel to? Um, the reason, because I'm very interested in meeting different people, and going to different countries. Uh, I'd like to go to Switzerland very much. Switzerland? Why Switzerland? Well, from the pictures I've seen of it, it looks a very beautiful country. And design is also an interest of yours. Uh, clothes designing, I presume? Yes, clothes designing. Do you make many of your own things? Yes, I try to make most of my own clothes and design them myself. What's the hardest thing to make? Uh, jackets, I think, for me anyway. Don't see why. <laughs> No, um, they're just a little more difficult, especially when I'm trying to design them as well. That's Miss Golden Shears, Jackie Thomas.
Jackie Thomas. <laughs> Miss Horafanua. Miss Horafanua is 19-year-old Jenny Bartridge. Jenny is a hairdresser from Palmerston North. Good evening, Jenny. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Tell me about books. I'm fascinated with you and books. I like spooky books. Spooky books? <laughs> what sort of spooky books? Mainly Alfred Hitchcock stories and true ghost stories. Were you scared as a small child about ghosts? Maybe this is why you started to read them? Well, I wasn't scared when I read books, but I was scared when my brother hid behind a corner and, you know, came out at me. Yeah, I suppose most people would be, especially when it's your brother, because he's supposed to like you. <laughs> hairdressing, you are a hairdresser? Yes, I've been hairdressing in Palmerston North for four years. And what sort of styles are in at the moment, shall we say? Well, I think the page boy is in, also long and short hair are both in. Is that page boy that you have? Yes, basically a page boy. You also can have it in a longer style. And, and wigs, are they, you know, they were the rage, what, a year ago? Yes, they're definitely out now, but in for men. Miss Horofan Hua. <laughs> Jenny Barbridge. Miss Taranaki. Carol Lufiu, this year's Miss Taranaki, is from New Plymouth. Carol is 20 and is a telephonist clerk. Carol, you've got a delectable figure, but it doesn't quite tie in with your cooking. You like cooking? I like cooking. Yes, I do enjoy cooking, actually, because my father's a chef. What sort of meals do you like preparing most? Curries or what? No, mainly ori oriental foods, um, mainly. I like a lot of steaks also. What's a safe dish, you know, that really no one can sort of mess up? Well, steaks, I think, mainly, because, well, I can cook them quite well. <laughs> this is interesting because uh, you couple steaks with trap shooting, which is your other tremendous interest. Uh, this is a girl with a double barrel shotgun who can hit just about anything. <laughs> You're pretty good. Well, I wouldn't say pretty good, but I am quite good, yes. <laughs> well, I won't argue with you. That's Miss Horofanua. <laughs> Carol Rufio. Miss Hawkes Bay. Miss Hawkes Bay, Glynis Maletta, is from Titakino, near Hastings. 19-year-old Glynis is a teacher's aide. Glynis, welcome to Dunedin. What a marvellous audience. Yes, it certainly is, and it's a real thrill to be here tonight, too. You've been to Australia, which is lucky. You were a Rotary Exchange uh, student. Could you explain how that works? Yes, I spent four months in Australia on a, uh, as a match twin on a Rotary Exchange. And during this time, I attended school in Victoria, in Australia. Um, while I was over there, I was also very fortunate in that I was able to travel fairly extensively throughout Australia and also to compete in a number of shows over there. And as horse riding has been my main hobby for a number of years now, this really was a great thrill. Glynis has a horse called Paris, which I wonder if it's watching tonight. <laughs> well, no, I, don't, I do. I have rather missed the horse riding while I've been away, but we've had such a marvellous time that um, I think it's more than compensated. However, I'm looking forward to getting back to horse riding uh, when I return home. That's Miss Hawkesbury, Glynis Moletta. <laughs> Miss Moletta. Miss Tourist Diamond. Barbara Dill is a 19-year-old advertising copywriter. 
Barbara from Te Awamutu is this year's Miss Tourist Diamond. Incredible hush that comes over. How are you, Barbara? I'm very well, thank you, Colin. Tell me about copy, because you're a copywriter, which means you're pretty good with words. Well, I suppose I'm supposed to be pretty good with words. Yes, I am a copywriter. I work in Hamilton, and copywriting actually involves the laying out of advertisements. An advertiser comes in with a product to sell, and it's your job to try and sell this product to the public in the best way that you possibly can. What are the hardest products to sell? Well, I don't really know. I suppose that's more up to the advertiser because really, I suppose you're just creating an advertisement. Um, I don't know. There's a variation in the job, uh, right from you know food products through clothing to uh, hardware and furniture. You know, basically anything that's sold, you are advertising it. It fits in nicely with your other uh, ATCL studies. You're studying speech. Yes, that's also tied up with the English language, of course, and you need a fairly wide um, sort of grasp of the English language. Uh, I think that you're right. It is actually tied in fairly much. Miss Tourist Diamond, Barbara Dill. <laughs> Barbara Dill, Miss Coromandel Peninsula. Miss Coromandel Peninsula is Diane Reed from Thames. Diane is a 21-year-old secretary. Hello. Hello. What sort of books do you like reading? Well, I like books with a little bit of historical um, things in them. Um, I've just read recently Exodus, which I enjoyed a lot. Actually, Leon Uris is one of my favourite authors. Mm -hmm. what, what other books? Must be some more. Oh, yes. Um, well, I've read a few of his. Um, and just on the tour, I read a book by um, Anne Rand, I think it was, mm -hmm. called The Fountainhead. That wasn't historical, but it was a very, very good book. Very long and very interesting. Would you like to write a book yourself one day, do you think? Um, no, I don't think so. Well, all right, you can read him. That's just as good. That's Miss Coromandel Peninsula. <laughs> Diane Reed. <laughs> Miss Waikato. Eighteen year old Cynthia Guerra is Miss Waikato. Cynthia lives in Hamilton, where she works for a government department. Good evening, Cynthia. Good evening, Colin. Good evening, everyone out there, too. You like singing? I love singing. What sort of songs? Well, I like pop songs, up-tempo songs, but I also like slow ones. I think it depends what mood I'm in, really. Have you done any singing professionally? Not professionally, but I've done amateur singing around the Waikato and a bit in Auckland. Mm -hmm. And what about a career? Does this fit in with your uh, career prospects, singing? Yes, that is what I want to be professionally. I'd like to be a professional singer and also I'd like to be a professional actress. Which means obviously perhaps moving away from uh, Waikato? Yes, I think so eventually. It's good to start off there, but I think to get anywhere you have to move to a bigger city. Miss Waikato, Cynthia Guerra. <laughs> Cynthia Guerra. <laughs> Miss Auckland. Susan Vickers from the North Shore is this year's Miss Auckland. 21-year-old Susan is a fashion sales assistant. I forgot you were the tall lady. Yes. <laughs> the last one. Uh, you collect shells, which is interesting. But it's not half as interesting as how you collect them, because she actually dives down and get them, gets them herself, don't you? That's right. Um, some of them I have bought from collector's shops. Um, they're hard to find, though, but I collect, uh, collect deep sea shells from all over the world. But I have quite a few that I have collected myself. How deep down do you have to get them, Susan? Oh, 
we go down to 40, 50 feet? This is with okay. aqualung gear, I guess? Uh, with aqualung if you're scuba diving, but um, if you're free diving or snorkel diving, I don't know, about 10 feet or something like that. Yeah, play it pretty safe, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fashion is uh, also your job and an interest, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I enjoy fashion. I like to know what's in, and um, although I don't follow all the trends, I don't think. I'm a more casual girl, I think. Hmm. You're a very pretty casual girl. Miss Auckland, <laughs> Susan Vickers. <laughs> Susan Vickers. Well, that's, that's the girls and the judges here on stage. You're judging them the same as you are at home. And uh, you've got your favorites. And perhaps you've thought, now, with the one with the long hair, was she prettier than the other one or what? It's very hard when you can't see them all together. So let's do that right now, shall we? And introduce once again the 1973 Miss New Zealand contestants. There they are, the 12 most beautiful girls in the country. One of them will be very shortly Miss New Zealand 1973, which of course carries with it all sorts of prizes, $10,000 worth, in fact, of prizes. And the girl who wins the coveted title goes away to represent this country at the Miss World contest, which once again is a glittering evening, a fairy tale evening, that can literally take a girl from rags to riches. Here is the girl, Miss World, Belinda Green. Hello, Belinda. Hi. Miss World, tell me what it means, really. What did it mean to you, the night in London, and they said, Miss World is Shh, Belinda Green? How I felt. Mm. I think I felt a little bit like, a bit, a little bit like I do now. <laughs> I wasn't nervous at all in the Miss World contest, purely because um, I didn't have a hope of winning, and that's why I wasn't nervous. Whereas here tonight, I think I'm suffering for all those girls out there. I'm not nervous for me, I'm nervous for them, who's going to win, sort of thing. And I think I'm going through more now than I did in the Miss World contest. But when they announced my name, I didn't feel a thing after that. I didn't see a thing, I didn't see anything. I just, I just went blank. You know, <laughs> What sort of people have you met since? Obviously, we're, we're talking about Miss World for one of these girls. What sort of a career is it now? Oh, it's fabulous. I don't think you could ask for anything, or there is no thing that I could possibly think of that a girl of, I'm 21, a girl of 21 um, could have where they could meet as many people as I have, um, travelled as much as I have, and earned as much money as I have, I suppose. But the people you meet, um, I think that's what makes or means the most to me, being Miss World. I think because I've met royalty, I've met pop groups, I've met really down and out people, very sick children, and you think, gosh, I'm so lucky I've got two legs, two arms, you know, some of the time, and it's fabulous. And the memories I ha I've had have been incredible. And I was thinking tonight in the dressing room of when I first arrived at the airport, it was very early in the morning, I had bags under my eyes and I was really tired, and I thought, oh, you know, six weeks, six weeks in one country, six weeks of being alone, because I do travel alone as Miss World. And I've come away with a completely different picture. And when I go back to London after each country, I always think, I go back and I think, well, that was great, now I'm off to something new. And this is, I'm very sincere in saying this, I haven't said it before, but this is the first time I really regretted leaving a country and felt sad about leaving a country because of Joe and what he's done for me and especially because of the gang, just everyone on the tour. And I just feel more sad than anything. I present. think the people love you too. Miss World, Belinda Green. Yeah. Belinda Green, Miss World. And as Belinda says, she goes away very shortly to the other side of the world in London, back to London. And 
That reminds me that we've got a man who's come almost from the other side of the world to entertain us tonight, just as far as Belinda has. Canadian recording and in singing star, Gary Buck. <laughs> Paper nearly every day People breaking up and just walking away from love And that's wrong That's so wrong A happy little home comes up for sale Because two fools have tried and failed to get along And you know that's wrong A man hurts a woman and a woman hurts a man When neither one of them won't love and understand Take it with a grain of salt Got to believe that a little bit of love is better than no love. Even a bad love is better than no love. And any kind of love is better than no love at all. Got to believe that a little bit of love is better than no love. Even a sad love is better than no love. And any kind of love is better than no love at all. No love at all is a poor old man standing in the corner with his hat in his hand and no place to go. And he's feeling low No love at all is a child in the street Dodging the traffic and begging to eat On the tenement road And that's a rough road to hoe No love at all is a troubled young girl Standing on the bridge at the end of a world And it's a pretty short fall I got to believe that a little bit of love Is better than no love Even a bad love is better than no love Any kind of love Got to believe that a little bit of love is better than no love. Even a sad love is better than no love, and any kind of love is better than no love at all. Got to believe that a little bit of love is better than no love. Even a bad love is better than no love, and any kind of love is better than no love at all. From Canada, Gary Buck. This is the Mill Valley Award, which is a new award. It goes to the best ball gown, which I guess the judges had just as much trouble picking as they will have Miss New Zealand. Uh, they're beautiful gowns, they're all wool, they're designed individually for the girls, and some of them very, very expensive indeed. To let you try and make up your mind, which you think is the best ball gown, let's introduce, once again, in ball gowns, the 1973 Miss New Zealand contestants. <laughs>
Aren't they beautiful? How'd you like to have to make up your mind about that? Gorgeous. <laughs> and I have the envelope for the Mill Valley Award, so let's not keep you in suspense any longer. Judge's decision. Mill Valley Award goes to the best ball gown, Miss Wellington, Susan Roach. Well, very soon we'll have the judge's decision on the other major awards, which is why really we're all here tonight. And let's hope it's, as usual, a popular one. And here's a popular entertainer who, later on this month, in fact, in only a few days, is a way to uh, represent us as a singer, not as a beauty queen, in America. Eddie Lowe! <laughs> Well, while we're all getting excited about Miss New Zealand 1973, we must try and look back at the same time. Not too sadly, I hope, but there's a young lady who, she's only got a few more minutes rain, and that's the lovely Miss New Zealand 1972, Christine Allen. Good evening, Christine. Hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, well, this... I think this moment uh, brings my year full circle, doesn't it? And I think it's, it's going to come with a big crash any minute now. Um, I have a, a very special feeling about the year that I would like to convey to everybody, but I really don't think I can possibly do it. Uh, it's a very big feeling, and at the risk of sounding terribly stereotyped, I'd like to say that it has been a very special year um, for both myself and my family. Uh, it's been tremendous. And um, it's been a year of uh, suitcases and 
speeches and um, a year crowded with people and, and all the pressures that go with them. But I think uh, it has been a very special year because um, I think the people have been very important to me. I've met a, a lot of very beautiful people uh, over the last year. I don't mean beautiful to look at, beautiful in face and figure. I mean beautiful inside. I mean um, very warm, radiant, thinking people. And that has been very important to me. I'd like to say thank you to, to you all. You all know who you are, those people. And um, I think I'm terribly nervous. <laughs> uh, I think apart from all the material gains that the year has meant to me, I've had two wonderful trips overseas with Air New Zealand. Uh, they have looked after me very well, been terribly cooperative. I've had um, a super wool wardrobe supplied by the New Zealand Wool Board. I've spent months and months touring with the Wool Board and of course with Lane's Hosiery on various promotions. And uh, I have a lovely Avenger car to, to go back to and um, to run around. And I think apart from all those material things, which are important, but they're not the most important things, I think uh, the year has given me a tremendous insight into the fields that I'm interested in. It's meant a lot of PR work and promotion work in general, and that's the sort of thing that I intend to carry on with, so that has been important to me too. Uh, and I think in closing, my time's probably running out drastically, but I would like to say that the best thing that I can wish the girl who wins is that she learns as much about people, about New Zealand people in particular, and I think about herself as I have. Thank you very much. Miss New Zealand 1972, Christina. Perhaps a little sad for you now, Christine, because your time, as you say, is running out. And uh, before you go, your last official function will be to assist with the prize giving. So let's get on with it, shall we? The first prize that we give away is a traditional one, and I think it's a rather super one in lots of ways, because it's one that's chosen by the girls themselves, the Miss Friendship Award. She wins this beautiful engraved tray as a, a lasting memento of her time with the girls. Uh, the girls themselves choose this. It's secret ballot, well, as secret as you can have it with 12 girls. I think they all keep their secrets to themselves. So it is important, probably as important as any of the other awards. And Miss Friendship is Miss Horafanua. <laughs> Jenny Barbridge, Miss Horafanua. Well, to announce the up to the first prize, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the Mayor of Dunedin, Mr. Jim Barnes. <laughs> Mr. Barnes. Mr. Joe Brown and Mrs. Brown, the Honourable Hugh Watt and Mrs. Watt, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say something about Joe Brown. I've been given one minute in which to do it. I want to say to him and to Mrs. Brown a very sincere thank you from you and from me for this tremendous job that they do in bringing this show to Dunedin year after year. With one exception, all these finals have been here. There are two reasons, of course, why it should come here. One, because Mr. Brown's a businessman and this is the largest hall in New Zealand, and we believe still the best hall in New Zealand. <laughs> Secondly, that Mr. Brown is an Otago and a Dunedin man, and he himself chooses to bring this show here in spite of the heavy pressures that are brought on him because his great love of this city and his great loyalty to us. May he always continue to do this for us. And one final word. Mr Brown, if the pressures are heavy next year, remember the main centres of New Zealand, other than Dunedin, will have colour television a month or two before us. And that is a month or two, we'll have it a month or two after the next Miss New Zealand show. Don't take away this 
tremendous, spectacular show that we've looked forward to for so long uh, and never hope that it'll leave Dunedin. Thank you, Joe Brown and Mrs. Brown and the Brown family for what you do for us in providing the highlight of Queen's Birthday weekend. Thank you very much. The Mayor of Dunedin, Mr. Jim Barnes. I have five envelopes here. I will announce what the prizes are. I will hand them to Christine, who will open them, and hand them on to Mr. Barnes, who will announce the winner. The fifth place getter, $50. The fifth prize goes to Miss Tourist Diamond, Barbara Dill. Christine, you can open now the fourth place getter, $100. The fourth place getter is Miss Coromandel, Miss Diane Reed. Third place getter, two hundred dollars. The third place getter is Miss Wellington, Susan Roach. Thanks for bringing that great gang to Dunedin. 50 odd people. It's wonderful of you. And all the very best. Now we come to second, or runner-up. This girl receives $500 in cash, the Miss New Zealand delegate sash. She has an all-expenses-paid trip to Melbourne, Australia as the New Zealand delegate to the Queen of the Pacific contest. The second place getter is Miss Auckland, Susan Vickers. And now to announce the major prize, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the Deputy Prime Minister, the Honourable Mr. Hugh Watt. And your Worship the Mayor and Lady Mayoress, Mr. and Mrs. Brown, Christine and ladies and gentlemen, could I thank you very much indeed for the opportunity of joining you tonight in this most happy function. I want to say too that I do believe that there are thousands of people throughout New Zealand who are listening in tonight and viewing this performance and wondering whether 
they will one time have the opportunity of seeing a performance such as this. This has given the opportunity to the young ladies of New Zealand to present themselves to the people of their country. We are indeed proud of the 12 young ladies who have been selected by the people of their district to come forward to the final. My congratulations to those girls who have already received prizes this evening. The credit goes to those who have been responsible for organising these uh, carnivals throughout the years. And my friend, the Mayor of Dunedin, has already paid a great tribute to Mr Brown for what he has done. I say that New Zealand is better for, for functions such as this and uh, the production of Miss New Zealand every year is something that we can well be proud. The experience that they receive, the publicity that New Zealand receives and further the experience that all who take part in such an organisation is a great tribute to this nation of ours. You are very anxious, I know, as I am, to know who is the winner. I will say no more, but to thank everybody who has made a contribution to it. I will ask you in a moment, Mr. Watt, to open this envelope, which has the name of the girl in it, who receives, as Miss New Zealand, 1973, a $5,200 personal appearance contract, a $3,000 Vauxhall Viva car presented by Lane's Hosiery, a $1,500 top fashion wool wardrobe presented by the New Zealand Wool Board, the Miss New Zealand trophy that Christine is holding, the Miss New Zealand sash, and of course, Miss New Zealand 1973, Jets Air New Zealand to the Miss Universe contest this year in Athens, Greece, and the Miss World Beauty Contest in London. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been run for 14 years by Mr. Joe Brown. The winner this year, for the first time, is Miss Otago. Miss Otago. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Miss New Zealand 1973, Miss Pamela King. What do you say? <laughs> I can't believe it. I really can't. I, I never expected, really, I didn't expect it. Um, First of all, listen, there's so many people to thank. First of all, there is Joe Brown and the people who made me enter the first contest, Miss Otago. They're sitting right here in the audience and they know who they are. <laughs> and they've been wonderful to me, but, but Joe, Joe's been exceptionally wonderful to me and all the girls, and I know they all love him. I know we all do. He's like a dad. And Miss World, too, who has been tremendous. She's been very helpful in anything we wear and do and say and anything we need help with, she's there, as are all the people on the tour. 
Um, another person who I'm very, very grateful to is my mother. She's sitting up there too. And she's going to die. <laughs> Miss Otago, 1973, Pamela King. Miss New Zealand. Miss New Zealand 1973, Miss Otago, Pamela King.